Oh, I see we already have a question. Welcome to the Open Office Hours. Uh, I am so grateful to be here again with the one and only Richard. Thank you so much, Richard, for oh. being here all the way from Barcelona, back in care of Dublin, Ireland. Uh, here he is, Richard Butler. I'm, I'm in care of California, where, where I was born. Which is amazing to me because you have yes. the thickest Irish accents, but you were born in California and live in Barcelona. So that's... I don't know why I like that, the thickest Irish accent. The sweetest Irish accent. The oh, reminds me well, I'm I mean... a farmer. Look, I have my carrot. I'm not a farmer. <laughs> oh, maybe I am a farmer. <laughs> well, well, welcome, everybody. We're going to get started. Yes. Uh, we have a lot to show you today. And of course, like usual, we are going to answer your questions. Please reach out to us in the Q&A. And if you are watching the replay, of course, ping us at any time. We are happy to yes, answer your questions. So I'm going to get started by sharing my screen here and uh, let us begin. Uh, so today, Richard, what are we going to cover? That's a good question. We are going to cover what real clients are doing with plr.me content. Some of it, I can't believe it's plr.me content. We're going to talk about rewriting transformations and uh, that's a really interesting section that we'll be doing and we will answer your questions as well. We still have questions that uh, you guys are putting in when you sign up. Lots of great questions. We'll be answering those. And of course, we'll be getting to the Q&A uh, as we go along. Now, do help us uh, or, or do bear with us because sometimes there's so many questions. There's so many things coming up that it's like just it's it's too much for us. So just hang on. We will answer all your questions. Now, what, there's this great guy who is called Richard, who apparently <laughs> created a magazine. Um, and that Richard would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I created, and I actually, I'm late on the May edition of the magazine, but I decided to create a uh, successful living magazine. And what I did was I got a template in uh, the equivalent of Canva. It's called Crello, but I just use uh, Crello. Um, I got a template in there and I just literally copied and pasted content from PLR.me into the template and made some changes. Not huge changes now, not, you know, it wasn't massive changes, um, but the idea behind the, that, that month's magazine was, it was about successful living. Um, the one that I did in April was about goal setting. And the one that's coming out in May, I still have to decide, but don't tell anybody. Uh, so <laughs> this, is, this is the first key thing to any content you produce, be consistent in your timings. And, we're not all perfect and uh, I'm not perfect because I'm still behind on that one. Um, but I know with PLR.me content, it's gonna take me a couple of hours just to actually put it in to that. Um, here's a little tip that, that I would suggest is find a template in Canva or get somebody to create a template for you and then use that every single month. So that again, you have consistent design. So uh, content, uh, consistent publication times, and consistent design, I think, are probably key uh, to to these things. And Richard, um, I just want a, a great question mm, uh, from Reese: Is that a print or an yes. online magazine? It's an online magazine, um, but can easily be uh, converted into a printable magazine by pressing Control and P. <laughs> and it'll print out any confusion. <laughs> You're terrible. Sorry. Yeah, I no, couldn't it is resist. A, I couldn't resist. <laughs> it is a, an online magazine. Now you did post this on SlideShare. Mm, I do see mm. that. Um, as a, at the time I took the screenshot, you had over 200 views of this magazine. And, yeah. um, you know, it's something simple. SlideShare directly also, I think SlideShare is part of the LinkedIn family. So, yes. you know, it sort of directly kind of connects with LinkedIn. Uh, so if your clients are on LinkedIn, it's a great place to put your PDFs. And we're going to do a little sneak peek. There will be something else on SlideShare that we'll be showing soon as I, well. I actually have to check, Ronnie, but I know that many years ago, I took one of our slide decks um, and I put it, I don't think I even changed it and I put it on SlideShare and I believe I reached the front page uh, on it and there was something like 20,000 views of it, I believe. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I haven't been able to, to reproduce that uh, yet again, but um, you just never know. It's like everything. It's like YouTube videos. You don't know when or why they may go viral. So you may publish a magazine and you may be publishing a magazine every month. And then just one month, somebody picks it up and it goes viral. But 
but the idea is just just keep publishing out there um should we take a, a question sure yeah, let's do it um brandeline says how do you edit the graphics now are these the wallpapers do you think ronnie or are they the graphics that might come in? Um, in Brendan, if you don't mind being a little, like, let us know which type of graphics you're referring to. Um, so if you're referring to eBooks, it's a little bit different than if you're referring to the inspirational, uh, you know, viral graphics that we have. So just let us know. But in general, I mean, you could use Canva, of course, to edit any graphics that you'd like. Um, that's probably the simplest, easiest way. Mm. If you don't use Canva, like uh, Richard um, uses Crello, C-R-E-L-L-O. Um, and you can edit the graphics in there as well. Okay, so uh, Reese said, um, they laughed when I said press control and P and it instantly becomes a print magazine. Uh, Regina asks, were you able to copy and paste easier in Crello than in Canva? I tell you, the reason why I'm using Crello is because I got it on a lifetime deal. It was one of these deals that sometimes you, you get and it just, uh, they say $60 and you have it for life because they're trying to build their audience, et cetera. It's very similar to, to Canva. But either one of those, I think, if you were to invest in something, Canva is good. Although you can actually get the free version of Canva as well, that you can do mm -hmm. lots and lots of things. So Absolutely. put Canva in your toolkit of things to do uh, and, and things to uh, to have. Um, Aida, I hope I pronounced that correctly, says, I bought many things in PLR. Unfortunately, my tech expertise is not good. I do not no flow to put a program together uh, that I could sell or create or, or, or sell an ebook. Okay, the first thing is what we do with PLR content is we have it in Word format, we have it in a PowerPoint format. Um, you don't need any other special software to use our content. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing I say to people is if you struggle with the tech, there's two things you can do. Drive yourself crazy, trying to create something or to edit something and then get frustrated or you can hand it over to somebody and ask them can you give me a hand okay this uh, and in this day and age it could be your son it could be your nephew your niece that they might just be interested in word and doing little designs and even they could do it so so tap into your network and see if you have a friend or a colleague who would help you out if not maybe you go to somewhere like fiverr and you hire somebody to create a template in Word. Again, you know, I always say to people, if you can get a template created, so much better. Okay, so maybe you spend $20 getting a template created in Canva or in uh, Word, and then every month you can just copy and paste the content into that. It's, it's and nice then you're sense. able to be consistent, right? It looks like a consistent yeah. um, design with your brand. Uh, yeah, so absolutely. Um, Emma is asking, can you sell printables designed in free Canva accounts on Etsy or other platforms. Um, I don't see why not. Uh, I am not a lawyer though, and you might want to double check with Canva in terms of their terms of service, but I don't see why you you can't. I mean, Canva is used for commercial purposes all the time. Um, okay, so the other question in or comment here, Thomas said, I started creating Loom videos from the slideshows. That's a great idea. Loom, we use Loom a lot, um, L-O-O-M.com. A uh, great way to record videos very quickly. You can record your screen, you can record your face, and you can record both at the same time. Uh, mm. Highly recommend. You, you probably send me one Loom video a week with comments on things at, that I've at done. Least, and you say, at least. And then usually he has <laughs> a bowl of popcorn while, while I uh, entertain him for like 20 minutes. Um, That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's keep going. I want to get back to these and keep the questions coming. Love your questions. Now I want to talk about what Tamara did here. Um, so Tamara created a gratitude and inner wisdom journal, and this is specifically for trauma survivors. Now, what she did was she took the content from the PLR.me library, the gratitude journal in, in, in particular, and then she tweaked it. She made it very specific to her niche. Obviously, gratitude journal is generic. That could be for anybody, but she's zoned in on her niche, which is trauma survivors. And this is her post that she mentioned. Um, so we can see here, um, here's the cover it's coming soon to Amazon. So this was a printed physical journal. And then she also posted here, this started as a PLR piece. Now it's mine. And she was so now, proud of it. And let me just- Hold on one second, Ronnie. It's on Amazon. Don't we say- you can't put our content on Amazon. 
Very good on? question. Very, very good question. This is a paperback. <laughs> this is a printed book. Uh, printed books are um, absolutely, uh, you can print books on Amazon. Um, also, to be honest, and I'm just doing a little live preview on Amazon here. You can see she has dedicated dedication. She has uh, really what she custom wrote. She wrote her own introduction because again, it's targeted to a very specific niche. We're talking about trauma survivors, not just a general gratitude journal. So she added a lot of new content. And then of course, uh, it's not going to, the preview is not going to show the entire thing, but there's the, the, the gratitude prompts in there and she tweaked it and made it relevant to her audience. So if you think that our content, something like the inspirational journal or the gratitude journal or motivation and, and, and uh, confidence or self-esteem. If you think those things are broad, all you need to do is make it tailored to your audience. What are their questions? What are their deepest desires? What are their worries, their fears, their anxieties? How can you make it related to them? We're going to show you more about this in, in just a few minutes, but this here you can see completely transformed from the gratitude journal and a beautiful journal that she created using our content. So um, I'm, I'm sure that there are some questions about that. I uh, let me know what you see there. I, I think, well, I think you said two really important things. The first one, well, you said many important things, but uh, in this context, um, the niche and your tribe, the two things really, really important. So mm -hmm. as you say, gratitude and not, it's not just a gratitude journal, but an inner wisdom journal as well. Okay, suddenly I get curious about that. And as you say, it's for a particular niche. Okay, so you have to know uh, who it's for. Um, what's the objective of this? Okay, so, so excellent. Um, okay, what else? Uh, could you please recap about how to use URLs and PLR like per the video? Uh, give me a little bit more information on that just to, to know because I know um, who get was uh, we actually we actually had a call and she has watched the homework video a little bit late but uh, I said I'd call her out on that and she has watched it so just let me know who at what you what you mean just on that how to how to use the URLs and we will certainly answer that um, how do you change it to paperback to sell on Amazon well when you go into um, what they call KDP, which is the um, Amazon um, area where you publish, there's two options. One is publish a paperback and the other is publish a Kindle. So you don't touch the Kindle one. You must click on publish a paperback. Um, I'll be honest, it can be quite finicky to actually publish on Amazon because they're very strict about the margins for when it goes to print. Now, they do give you a lot of templates and they say, what size is the book? Do you want 8 by 5, uh, 8.5 by 11, etc. There's a little bit of work that you need to do just to study how to actually get the right size. But again, there's people out there that will actually create covers for you and create the insides for you as well. On I, the right I think size. what Hewitt was mentioning was... Um, the how it's on slideshare.net so the pdf you uploaded it to slideshare.net um so think of slideshare as youtube but instead of video it's pdfs and so slideshare hosts pdfs and presentations and so you can grab that link from slideshare and you can share it on your social media you can share it in your email you can share it wherever you'd like so i think that's what you mean hewitt uh, okay. And, and the really good thing about it is, as you said, it's in the LinkedIn family and there's an option to actually add it to your LinkedIn profile if you wish very easily. Now, Roy has a great question. He says, uh, were you joking about Amazon or are there some rules? I appeal our rules I should consider. So uh, oh, the right. most common question that we get is that Kindle um, eBooks, specifically eBooks, mm -hmm. Kindle has a policy that does not allow content that has been published elsewhere onto their platform. So for example, if you have a bunch of your blog posts, maybe that you guest posts that you post on other people's sites or on your own site, things that are freely available, they don't allow that. And that's Amazon Kindle mm. eBooks policy, not our policy. Now, when it comes to printed physical books, like what we showed you, um, that's no problem. You can absolutely create physical books on Amazon. Honestly, um, to, be, to be fair about it, 
Kindle, if you were to post your book on Kindle, uh, the ebook platform, you really don't make a lot of money off of it. You're probably better off. I mean, you, you can, it's, you can always, it's not to say that you, you know, you don't make any money, um, but you're making obviously a fraction of what you would make if you were to sell it yourself, because Amazon takes some huge percentage. I don't know what it is offhand. Maybe it's like 55 or 60% or whatever it is. And so you don't really make a lot of money off of there. Now, if you're doing it for lead generation or something like that, okay, that's fine. Um, but you're better off to sell your own products on your own store for something like that. Uh, yeah, One thing that it can be useful for is uh, uh, Amazon and the printer books is if you are doing um, an offline event, you can actually publish the book, print the book, and um, it might you, you might be able to print them for $6 per book. And it's a great thing that you could have at an offline event included is my latest paperback book. And it gives a lot of authority as well. So like all, like everything we talked about, like we talked about Udemy in one of um, our open offices, some of them are good for uh, authority building. Hey, I've published a book, you know? I have seen people who, you know, they, they say I'm an Amazon bestseller. Um, and immediately people don't even think, but how did they become an Amazon bestseller? They just see that and it gives you instant authority. So it can be very good for that as well. Um, okay, so let's continue um, just to keep the ball rolling here. So um, I shared what Tamara did, which is outstanding. Now I'd like to share what Carrie did. And mm -hmm. uh, yet again, uh, this is kind of neat. This is again on Amazon. Uh, Carrie created a children's book. Now here's the interesting caveat about this. So this is a Kindle and a paperback version. However, what she did here is really unique. The actual book itself is really simple. It's, it's literally a children's book. And I actually will show you that here. So this is the book. You can see this is what it looks like. Um, and this is the Kindle version. Now, um, I'm going to come back to this first page in a second. But let's just go ahead and let me show you. Oh, I think I'm on the last page, actually. Let me go to the beginning. So this is the book here, my first owl book. Owl takes flight. They fly through the sky. Uh, these are all spoilers here. Well, these are spoilers, but again, you can see it's a very simple, it's a children's book. The contents of the book is unique. It's something that she wrote herself. Mm. She compiled her own pictures. But what she did is in the, and I'm not going to, because it's, it's her own, obviously you, you should purchase it if you want to take a look. She has uh, a little note here at the top that says, thank you for purchasing. I have a little uh, fun pack for you. Uh, I, um, she I said, know. Uh, you know, a gift. And what she has some coloring pages, creativity pages, but she also gives away the owl fable that is from the PLR.me library. So that's ah, what this that's is clever. here. So the bonus is from the PLR.me library. And this is the owl fable that, again, she dresses up, she makes it look different, she has her own branding, and she offers that as a bonus to build her list from the Kindle book. Um, her, her Kindle so book is sold very well. Yep, sorry. You're, you're, you're telling me then that she's actually getting paid to build her list. Ah, yes, Richard. That's the pretty good. The sarcastic Irishman. There you go. No, 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 <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic. I love it. I, you know? I like to tease you. This is no, that's exactly, you're but exactly that's, that's right. That's amazing. She's, she's done very well with this book. You can see here, there's 35 ratings. Um, it's a very simple book, but people love simple books for children. And that's her audience. She's in the childhood education niche. And she now builds her list by giving away a bonus when you purchase her book. So you can see how she used the PLR.me content, not on Kindle, but as a bonus to grow her list off of Kindle. So I hope that makes sense. The, the PLR.me content is from is a bonus that she gives away when you go to her website after you purchase the Kindle book. Okay, so um, let's continue here. Uh, I'm sure we have some questions and we will get to them in just a minute. Um, I would like to now talk about the rewriting transformation. So this here, this we talked about this last time. And so if you uh, missed it, I'm gonna give you a really quick summary of what we did last time. Uh, first of all, I said to Richard, Richard, you, you're not only are you uh, a success in life coach, you also help us here at PLR.me, but you also are an English instructor. Okay, so Richard wears many hats, just okay. like how he speaks many languages. So <laughs> English, 
Irish, Gaelic, leprechaun, um, leprechaun and I'm nonsense. Is right. <laughs> nonsense. Yes, that, that's another one. So Richard teaches English to Spanish speakers to, to teach them, you know, how to um, uh, learn English. Now, your website again is I can't remember private English classes dot com private English, English classes dot com. So I said, Richard, I challenge you take something from the library, transform it, make it into something totally different. And so he did. He chose the top 10 motivational affirmations article. So this is the original article here. I, I, I actually purposely did choose something that was a little bit difficult because honestly, I said, how am I going to do this? So challenge accepted and we decided to see what we could do. And, and this was a great option because to be honest, I never would have made the connection of motivational affirmations and English students. So the next step, what Richard did was he rewrote it to suit his audience. And so this was, the, you know, you made some bullet points about who you're speaking to, what are their challenges? You know, they, they have a lack of confidence when they're speaking English. They don't remember the right structures. Uh, they're afraid to take a chance. These are the, the challenges. You made a list to understand, well, who's your target? Who are you speaking to when you're writing the article? And then uh, we redesigned this article to make it look nice and pretty. You actually uploaded this to SlideShare as well. I did. And um, I'm going to let you take over in just a second. I'm just going to bring you up to speed. This is from last time, right? So you saved the article as a PDF. We talked about this last time and how we redesigned it. And, and then you uploaded it to SlideShare. Wow. If you can go back just a yep. sec, because you've just stolen my thunder. So Ronnie, <laughs> being Ronnie said, Richard, that's not enough. I want more. So I said, Ronnie, I'm going to give you more. So now we can go on to the next slide. <laughs> so what did you do next, Richard? I recorded a video um, and I posted it on LinkedIn. And I know that a lot of the people that follow me are not native English speakers. So this is what I put in. I said, speaking in a language that is not your own can be daunting, but you know, there's a simple hack you can use to help. Okay. Um, watch below to find out and download the worksheet too. So what I did was I already had the PDF. I was reusing the PDF as a download. And then I created this video. And what are we at on the video? Let me actually refresh it because this has been open for a little while. So the video it looks here 15 uh, likes and comments this was just three days ago uh, yeah. uh sorry 15 uh share likes i guess whatever the linkedin calls it and then four comments yeah. in the comments here okay and you know I, I i've got good engagement on that um so much so that at the moment today i have three possible clients have reached out to me and said hey wow i need your help and these are people in the industry that I used to work in, in the recruitment industry. Um, so they have they have reached out to me and they said, listen, I need your services. I want to talk to you. That's okay. awesome. So look at that. So how long? So I want to actually walk through mm. this process a little bit. So what did you do? You know, how, how did you record this video? Where did you get the content to record the video? How like, again, it looks beautiful. How did you do all of that? And then just, yeah, walk us through those steps. But Okay, so you want all my secrets, basically. <laughs> yes, I do. I don't, okay. but everybody else does. Okay, so um, very simple to record it. Um, what you see at the back there is just a green screen. Okay, exactly what I'm using here as well. So it just gives um, a projection of an image that looks like I'm in a, a lecture theater. So that's the first thing. Now, the first thing I want to say to people is, your first video has to be the way it is, and that's it. I've invested money in a green screen. I've invested in different microphones and cameras, but only because I reinvested when I actually started to make money out of different things. So to start, you don't need anything else but your smartphone, okay? Or even the camera, which, for example, now I'm just, I, I didn't have time to set up my other camera. I'm just using the camera for my laptop, okay? So don't forget about the technology. The idea is to get it done. And then you can add all the nice things to it. Um, so I just recorded this just with the screen behind me. And then um, I just talked about what I actually, these mind hacks that I had. Now, I think what you do need to spend time on is 
thinking about what you write, because I wrote, but you know, there's a simple hack you can use to help you. So that immediately will get curiosity going. So you want to get people curious, you know, rather than just saying, um, here's a gratitude journal. Did you know the power that gratitude can have in your life? Actually, I didn't. Oh, well, I'll watch the video. OK, so it's it's words. We were playing a little bit with words. Now, one of the things that I tried to make sure here was that since my target audience are non-native speakers, I was speaking slowly and clearly. Because, again, I want to match my message to my target audience. If my target audience um, are struggling to understand what I'm saying, they're going to say, well, I'm not going to go near this guy because I don't even understand what he's saying because he's talking so fast. So match your message to your target audience. Super, super important. Um, and then I simply uploaded it to um, LinkedIn. Um, no, no special magic. I didn't, you know, I didn't do anything. I put in a couple of hashtags there. I don't know how useful they are on LinkedIn, but why not put them in? So just uh, language learning, ESL teaching, learning English online. Okay, just that. And I want um, to point out that, so Michelle has a question. So I said, uh, she says, I noticed that it says download worksheet. So here it says download the worksheet too. How would a person download a worksheet from your video? I noticed you have a link here, but do you want to just explain that? Yeah, so when you, when you paste in um, a URL, what it actually does is um, LinkedIn will shorten that URL. So that's why it comes up lnk.to, I think it was. And then it automatically opens it up. OK, so all it was was a copy and paste. And again, because I had it on SlideShare. So, so think about it. I created the, the article. I posted it in SlideShare. And then I said, OK, what else can I do with this? Oh, let's create a video. And then what I did was I then linked to that. So it's the same resource. I'm using the same resource, but I'm using it a couple of uh, different times. Now, um, if you could just click on my profile for one second, Ronnie, on, on LinkedIn. No, on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn. Yeah. And if you just, uh, I post another video and, and actually the, the video came back that uh, somebody just asked me that they would contact me. I think we have to go to activity, uh, is it? Uh, yeah, I'm so not on LinkedIn. Uh, activity here, uh, uh, this one? Yeah, so, so click on that one there. Um, this is another one that I, oh, cool. I literally, yeah. yeah, I literally did this in about 10 minutes, I'd say. I was in between calls. And I said, okay, I'm going to shoot a quick video. Um, common mistakes that my students make. Okay. Awesome. No matter how, um, no matter how um, advanced they are in their English, they always make mistakes. And here I, I find your content really helpful, Richard. I think I will need your help in the coming weeks. I will let you know. Okay. Bye. That's awesome. I, I wasn't selling anything. I just put, you know, if you need any more information, if you need any more help, just let me know. Uh, reach out to me or visit my website. And that's it. So and here it is to book. Yeah, and, and I think what you always say, uh, Ronnie, is, you know, you need to do it in a heartfelt way. It's not, hey, if you want your English, you need to contact me. I'm big gold chains and I'm the dude and <laughs> I have my baseball cap on and that type of stuff. No, uh, you know, you may attract a certain type of audience, which is fine, but that's not the audience I want. I know who my audience are, who are people who mainly are executive managers, in pharma companies, legal companies, banks, etc., And those are the clients I go for. And those are the clients that pay what I uh, ask. Okay. So I, I don't worry That's about awesome. other, you know, other students, etc. But then I thought, what else can I do? Because, you know, Ronnie, you know, he likes to up the bar a little bit. So I said, okay, Ronnie, <laughs> what do you want next? So Ronnie, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about that. So, I mean, first off, I want to say that you can keep this as simple as possible. Richard yeah. just took the PLR.me article, just to recap. So this is the article here uh, on PLR.me, top 10 motivational affirmations. He reworked it. He added in, you know, the, the challenges that people go through. So this is, sorry, this is the original article. Okay. So this is the top 10 motivational affirmations. He figured out who the audience is, what are their challenges, and then work that in. Okay. Well, I'm not logged into that. Then, then we last week, I forgot to actually show this in the slides, but we also created some quote graphics in Canva. So a reminder, I may not, I may not have a native accent, but I speak clearly, you know, and I have these graphics that we created, honestly, in about five minutes in Canva, just using the quote graphics within Canva, just in the search bar, type in quote, and you will be able to 
see and answer, um, seek and create beautiful inspirational graphics. We also did this last week. I forgot to put it in the slides, but you also created an infographic. I'm just recapping here. We started with one article. Oh, that's right. That's right. right? We forgot about that, but we started with one article. We created a new version of the article tailored to the Learn English uh, niche. Then we created inspirational graphics out of it, quote graphics for social media, an infographic. Richard uploaded that to SlideShare. You recorded a video version of the article, and that's what this is here. And then you recorded another video version. You've been you've already gotten three very interested clients from those videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is Richard's website, privateenglishclasses.com. And then, then Richard, you we get a drum roll. Ah, thank you very much. So <laughs> then, so then Ronnie said, "Okay, now what you're going to do, Richard, is we have audios that um, are on our site, background music, relaxing background music. I want you to create a, med a meditative audio. Now, I haven't. I will actually publish this on um, uh, on LinkedIn and see how it goes. Um, so all I did was." Um, I used a program. Uh, are you going to play or? Uh, I can play it. Yeah. You know what? Let's... That you... Here, let's. Welcome to the English language affirmation. These affirmations will help you become more confident speaking English. You have the world's smoothest Irish voice. Look at that. Nice and calm <laughs> and relaxing. <laughs> So all you did was you took the the, the music from PLR.me. Mm -hmm. If you if you search for music, you will find we have some relaxation meditative uh, audios, right? Background audios. And then you recorded with your sweet Irish voice, a meditative audio for the English speaking niche. We're mm -hmm. still in the same niche here. This is Richard's mm -hmm. real business where he teaches mm -hmm. English. He took one article and you, you know, you turned it into a new article with inspirational graphics, with an infographic, posted it on SlideShare, posted a video version on LinkedIn, and now created a meditative audio, all from one article. Oh, this one took a little bit longer, and not because it was that difficult. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, but what I used, <laughs> yeah, you're already laughing. Um, on, on the Mac, it comes with a program called GarageBand. And the only thing I or, use- Or in English, Band. GarageBand. <laughs> <laughs> you, Europeans say garage, garage? It's a, sorry, I got to laugh a little bit. We say garage band over here. I apologize. Garage band, garage there band. You, there you With go. With a good Irish bro. <laughs> Where you put the car band, you know? Um, so so, uh, so I, I opened this up and I just use it. It's a whole music program, but I just use it for uh, putting what they call two tracks together. One track is me speaking, the other track uh, is the actual audio and the audio was 29 minutes long so all I did was I cut it because I think uh, the the background audio was 29 minutes long I cut it because I think it's only two minutes and I cut it yeah, just at the right place yep. and what I what, what I did which I think was quite nice is if I say so myself I put the music starting first and about three seconds later I start talking so it just gives a nice it's not like music and the blah, 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 my, my Irish bro coming in and the same at the end um the, the toughest part of that was saving it. Now, why? Because every time I exported it, it was super loud. So I was like, this is a meditative audio. And I was like, oh my God, that's so loud. That's, that's driving me crazy. Until the University of Google showed me why. So there was just one setting that says export at maximum volume. And I took that off and then it was perfect. So that's the, that probably took me about 15 minutes to figure that one out. But the, but the actual audio itself, and I recorded it about three times because I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. But the audio itself, to put it together, was literally 10 minutes, I'd say. It was, it was nothing more. It sounds, now, uh, it sounds great. So, you know, and the other thing to say here, you don't have to use GarageBand. You could easily use your phone. There are voice recorder apps on your phone. Um, or you can, you know, keep use it as garage band. as possible. Or garage band, as they say back in uh, in Europe, um, but the point here isn't the technology. That doesn't matter. You could easily have someone. You can hire someone on Fiverr to put music to your to your voice, and it doesn't cost very much, right? If you don't want to deal with any technology, you just hit record on your phone and send that over. You can do that. 
That, that's not the point. The point is, how can we transform the content in a really simple and fun and easy way that actually is very helpful for people? Because think about if you actually are struggling with your mindset when it comes to speaking mm -hmm. English in this, in this particular niche, well, this will help the affirmations will actually help you to calm down, to recenter, to refocus. And it's just yet another way of taking the same piece of content, the same article and transforming it in multiple different ways. And I think, you know, the key here is to show you that it's completely what you would think unrelated niche to what we talk about on PLR.me. It's like, you know, we have nothing in theory on English language learning, but I've used PLR.me content for classes, you know, to talk to people about mindset. And then I would download one of the articles and we would use that as a discussion point. So the idea is to think, and it just came to me that, you know, for a, a lawyer, maybe you could record a meditative audio to calm them down before they go into court, before they go and speak to a client. So think outside the box. You know, it's not just you have to be a life coach or you have to be a medical doctor. You can use this for um, anything. There, there was one question, actually, I, I did answer it, but just for everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, uh, somebody asked about what teleprompter do you use? Now, teleprompters can, can, can really help. When it's a short video of two minutes, you don't need it. But for example, when we do our calendar videos, I use a teleprompter because it just keeps you on track. Um, you can get uh, physical teleprompters or you can get software based. The one that I've used on the iPhone, which is really good because it, you can use it on the web as well, is Big Vu or Big View, B I G V U. Um, and that's, I, I think it's on, on iOS and it's on Android, and that's really good. Um, there was a question as well with that, how far away do you need to stand from the teleprompter? At what distance? And my smart answer, as always, is depends how good your eyesight is. But when I, when I do our videos, um, I do actually take off my glasses and I do have to put the, you can usually increase the size of the text so that uh, uh, you can see it bigger, but some of them will work on tablets, et cetera. But again, you don't need that. Start with a small video, do a Facebook Live, make mistakes. People see you're authentic. And that's what people want to see. Um, I love that. It, it is about being authentic um, and it's okay to stumble. It's okay to make mistakes. Uh, in terms, uh, just to follow up with the teleprompter, um, that's the, the software, the, the piece that we use, I don't know if you have it with you, you may not have it with you. Um, the oh. company is called Desview, D-E-S, View. And what it does, you can clip your phone. I'm gonna you can show that there. Um, you can clip your phone to it. And let me pin the video, so yeah, go ahead. So yeah, you can, you can clip your phone to it. There's a special glass that and you put the camera back there you could use a fancy camera you can use an iphone you can use you know an ipad and then you can put your ipad or iphone you can, another you device. can even you use can, an android you could even use an android it, it is possible i'm just teasing I, I i'm an iphone guy i'm just talking like i know but um you need two devices though right you need a camera so it could be a phone um, and then you need another phone or tablet as your teleprompter. So you can just go to your app store, play Google Play Store and search for teleprompter. You'll find software that shows the text on the screen and it beams it up onto that special beam splitting glass. Um, when the camera is behind the glass, you don't see the words, but in front of the glass, you can read the words. And the tripod, really useful. Yes. Uh, this is one of, the, one of the smaller tripods that I have. Um, but you know, you just put this on a book, uh, on a table. Sometimes if it's not high enough, I just get a couple of books so that it's at the right height. Um, I think it's got to the stage where my, my wife has said, you have another tripod? Why do you need so many tripods? So I have a really big uh, tripod for outdoor sort of stuff. And then I have a small one just for the desk. Again, go to Amazon. You don't need to spend a huge amount on them. Maybe I 10. agree, but tri a tripod is very, very helpful. You, you definitely want to have that. Um, so John, in terms of suggestions for PC-based machines, I'm guessing you're referring to teleprompters. They, they, you typically are gonna find it on either an Android or um, iOS. I, there probably is something for the PC, but you, you need to be able to put it onto the actual physical teleprompter so you can actually look through the glass. So well, um, what, what Big Voo 
does BIGVU is it has the app, but it also has the website. And it's it's really good. I don't know if, if I've shown it to you, Ronnie, but you can actually say open up teleprompter and it opens up a window just underneath your camera of okay. your laptop. That's so neat. you can use it. Yeah, it really is. Uh, so uh, that says asking which is better, a physical teleprompter or software teleprompter? Honestly, you kind of, the best is both, right? So the software, the, the phone or the tablet connects and, and is like held onto the physical teleprompter that um, Richard was just holding up. So you can actually look through the glass, the camera's behind there, mm -hmm. and you can actually see everything. Um, th those physical teleprompters don't have, like there's nothing built into it. It's just a physical piece of plastic with a fancy glass. So you need to have something on there, like a phone or a tablet to use that. Um, and uh, that's, it's called Desview, by the way. So D-E-S-V-I-E-W, Desview. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, the thing is, don't hold yourself back with the technology. Don't say, I can't do the video until I get the teleprompter, until I get the microphone, until I get this. It, I have done that. And those are excuses. You, you have to do it. Someday, Ronnie, we will... I'll allow you to send people to one of my really early videos and it's just like it's cringy now but that's where I started you know it's and, that's and, the point you know exactly. Ronnie you have videos as well that are on the site that sometimes I find and it's like oh my god you've changed so much and you were like so different there and etc it's about practice it. though right you have to it start really yeah. yeah yeah you, you have, have to start. start I totally um, agree mm. go ahead yeah go ahead no yeah no I was going to say something there and then uh I forgot I uh, know the other thing with the teleprompter is you also want to be careful with the teleprompter because you don't want to be reading and then people say is this webinar scripted so you need to inject it with the personality uh hold on uh, yes uh, the teleprompter has gone up quick hold on can you roll back the teleprompter <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it can get really robotic the biggest yeah. tip I have about that is actually to be uh to write the script authentically write it as though you are speaking not as you're writing um it's very very different how you speak is going to be very different than how you write and practice you need to practice a lot yes. actually um i did talk about this i'm going to pull up the video here um so let me share my screen uh where's the share button here we go so on the on plr.me slash videos you if you scroll down you'll see under marketing and sales how to make engaging videos and have fun um, so I talk about teleprompters on there. I talk about other ways to make your videos engaging. Uh, so if that is something that you want to do, if you want to get more into video or just get better at video, take a look at that video. It actually was one of our most popular videos about how to make videos. So it's kind of funny. Um, so you, if you click on that, how to make engaging videos, I'll paste the link in the chat as well. Um, so you can, um, you can easily grab that. Now, before we continue, I just want to share something really quick because a common question we get is sort of how the pricing works, how credits work. I just want to uh, share that question. real quick. So if you go to plr.me slash pricing, you'll see the pricing link on the top here. Uh, now there's a lot of information on this page. I'm not going to cover everything, but I would like to, to talk about a few things. Um, so first off, you'll see we show some real other additional real world examples of what clients are doing. And you can scroll through them here. There's lots of amazing things. And Cynthia here created an outstanding course on resilience. Uh, here is Angela who created a face Facebook um, video, infographics, other videos, calendars, a full funnel, a coaching funnel. There's lots of stuff. So definitely take a look. And if you just scroll down, you'll see here, we have a comparison between freelancers and, and using done for you content. Um, freelancers are great if you can afford it, if you, if you can wait, right? That's sort of the difference between done for you PLR.me content is that you get the content right away because you click download and the download is there. You can start working on it right away. With freelancers, of course, not only does it take time, it takes a lot of money. And so we do have a comparison in there for you to think about as well. Uh, but this is the part that I wanted to focus on, and I'm just going to uh, blow it up here. So how do credits work? And it's really kind of three simple steps. Um, think of it sort of like an arcade when you go to, you know, if you, as a kid or if you have kids, you've gone to Chuck E. Cheese uh, or Dave and Buster's or any arcade as a kid, you know, you would go to the front desk and you would buy tokens, right? Those tokens would let you play games and certain games, maybe they're more complicated, maybe they're more advanced, they might 
charge be charged more than the simpler games like skee ball is less than a fancy arcade game or whatever right so the point though is that you go to the front desk and you purchase those credits and you use those credits to download products and that's that's exactly how plr.me works uh, there are products that um are very simple like articles and affirmations and graphics and then there are really complicated products like courses that might have 30 or 40 lessons that have additional handouts for each lesson or maybe there's um, ebooks that require a lot of writing there's there could be 60 70 page ebooks with graphic design and all of that stuff those are going to be more than a simple a couple of page article right so you purchase credits, you use those credits to download products. And then if you run out, you can always purchase more credits at any time. And just real quick, um, maybe Richard, you want to talk about the different types of products that we have and the different credits uh, for those products. Absolutely. Um, one of the great things is that a lot of our products are just one credit in value. Uh, for example, our articles, affirmations, the wallpapers, the worksheets, etc. And as Ronnie said, as we get more complex in the products, I mean, there's more uh, pages, maybe, et cetera, um, they, they go up in credit. But the, the meditative audio, um, seven plus credits. So depending on the length of the actual audio as well. Now, again, if you want to get music and download music and purchase it on a, a, like one of these stock websites, it would be really expensive. Okay, all of our all of our meditative audios, they're all copyrighted, uh, copyright free. You're not going to have any problems with those. Um, then you have the challenges, which are really great. Challenges are a great um, for mini workshops that you can use a challenge, a five day challenge. Excellent for for that. Um, and then we start going up with, for example, slide decks, which are ten credits, a full PowerPoint slide deck for ten credits. Uh, even at its most expensive, if you were to buy pay as you go credits at two dollars twenty, that's um, that's uh, my God, my math. Twenty two dollars. <laughs> twenty two dollars. That's it. <laughs> I was thinking I'll buy two of them. It's such good value. But to get something like that designed, you wouldn't get it designed for for twenty two dollars. And then of course the journals, which are uh, amazing, fifteen credits, right up to the complete courses, 50, 50 plus credits. And then we have course bundles as well and ordinary bundles and bundles are where our content team have said, okay, we've um, a lot of great content about confidence and they put together um, and they bundle the content together. One thing I always tell clients when I talk to clients is with our bundles, just always check to see what content is in the bundles, because we don't have a format of saying every bundle has one ebook, four wallpapers and two affirmations. We like to mix and match. So sometimes you'll get a confidence bundle and it'll have 50 wallpapers, which is ideal for um, social networks. Other times you'll get it and it'll have three articles and two reports and four checklists. So always have a look to see because there's a great uh, variety of content and that content can then be used. You want to plan out how would I use that content? Well, I'm going to, to use a wallpaper to attract people on um, uh, Instagram, to click on my profile, which will lead them to a freebie which will then lead them to uh, the ebook that I want them to purchase. So mm -hmm. have a look at that. But we, you know, we have so much content um, and it's all really reasonably priced, I have to say. And yeah. one thing, they are called credits. I get people on calls and they say, uh, what, uh, how many coins is that? How many tokens? How many, <laughs> uh, I don't know, chips? And it's, it's credits. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Um, that, yeah, I think it, we're kind of used to, you know, going to an arcade maybe as kids mm. and calling them tokens or coins or um, it all works. It all works. Uh, so just to continue on here, um, there's just some examples of what you can get with credits. Uh, so with 400 credits, our most popular plan is you get 400 credits per year. And you can see here, you get 25 eBooks, 50 action guides. Action guides are like lead magnets, you know, little handouts that you can give away, um, worksheets. So you can get 125 items here for 400 credits. And, um, you know, here's another example. You can mix and match, right? Because you can mm, choose mm. what you want. It's sort of like a stock photo marketplace. You, you can pick exactly what you want. You're not stuck with just getting a bucket of stuff that you might not use. You actually can pick the content that you actually will use. So in this case, you can get 100 affirmations, 50 inspirational graphics, 15 meditative audios, 10 ebooks, and three journals. That's a total of 178 resources 
for the same 400 credits. So it just depends on what you're doing. Well, how do you want to use the content? Um, if you want to create a physical book with affirmations in it, maybe you want a whole bunch of affirmations. Um, maybe you want a whole bunch of inspirational graphics to fill up your Pinterest or your, um, you know, your, your Instagram. Uh, or maybe you want a bunch of eBooks. Maybe you want to have um, a bunch of courses, then you create your own members area. So you can grab a couple of courses, you can grab a bundle of content across a specific niche, and then use that to promote your courses. You know, it just depends on what your needs are. So lots of examples of different types of things that you can get using the credits. And I'm not going to go over all of them in here. There's obviously a lot. Uh, and we cover a lot of topics. I just wanted to point that out as well. I mean, generally, we say health, wellness, uh, business, uh, marketing, finance, um, but of English course, teaching. there's everything, Every, English teaching. Like I never would have guessed that somebody would use that. And that's pretty cool, right? So somebody. Um, somebody. This, this buddy right here. This buddy. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to um, just point out that, yeah, we, we cover a lot of different topics and um, you can see some of the examples on here as well. So, uh, and actually I wanna, uh, uh, before mm. you continue, just Liz uh, said something great. She says, I use the PLR.me content as rewards for my students who join my webinars. Um, so she actually gives away an ebook um, for attending a webinar. It's a great way to use the PLR.me content as a bonus. And Thomas says, I'm going to offer an ebook of the month club as lead generation. I love that. It's such a great idea to build your tribe and to give away great, great value. I was I was just going to say that, Ronnie, that, you know, what you always want to think about is the process you're going to take people through. I'm going to give them um, an image or a wallpaper I'm going to post to attract them to um, visit my website to find out more about sales pages or about social media. Once they're on my website, I'm going to give them a free. Uh, here's a here's a free tip for everybody. I'm going to give them a um, checklist or a fact sheet or uh, like a questionnaire where they have to actually write in a worksheet is the word I'm, I'm trying to think of, um, a worksheet. Why do I say worksheets to people? Because worksheets allow you to write out the answers to questions, but it doesn't tell you the how to do things. And that's where you come in. If you've um, suddenly discovered that, um, you know, you're lacking confidence in public speaking, why not download my ebook called 101 guy ways to um, improve your public speaking and then people go to your website so a lot of the times you can give them the what one what what where and all of that but you don't give them the how because that's where you come in and i i always think because some people say i'm going to give away you know uh an ebook as a freebie well maybe what if you were to give a checklist for free and then say if you want to know more details about this uh, then they can go and they can grab your ebook for $7, uh, et cetera. And we had a great question in here from Thomas. Um, how can I organize all my PLR files for better usage? Uh, so we have a, a spreadsheet for you, actually. Um, if you were to go to the My Downloads page in your uh, back end, let me just show you real quick. Uh, if you go to the My Downloads page, you will see here an export button. You can click on that and it'll export the spreadsheet for you. Um, and you'll be able to go in there and you can add, there's, there's columns in there for you. So you can say, uh, you know, I published it here or, or I want to use it here. Uh, there's, there's all those details in there for you. So definitely take a look at the My Downloads page. And to get to the My Downloads, you just click on the little arrow here and click on My Downloads. Um, yeah, you're going to say- uh yeah, I was going to say just Yam says there uh, mentions the content calendar. Now, I was talking to a client today and she's in the in the parenting um, uh, niche and helping parents and um, looking at activities for kids. And she said, I was looking at your calendar and I saw it was I think it was National Cookie Day. Now, I, I haven't mentioned that in any of the videos. And she said, I thought that is a great idea to tell parents to start cooking with their kids and she did a whole cooking workshop and she said it was amazing so awesome. again look at our content calendar which we publish every single month with holidays and see how you can link holidays back to um your particular niche so holidays coming up like um uh what's the day the the longest day of the year which is the 21st of june is it oh i don't know midsummer midsummer's night oh. i think it is 
So maybe you could use that to say, well, do a family gathering and celebrate that it's the longest day of the year and go outside and be with nature, etc. Think around the different holidays. OK, and, uh, yeah, some holidays um, I don't even know existed. Yeah. Yeah, no, go ahead. I'm just going to say I'm going to share my screen and show you how to find the content calendar on the site. So go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I watch you every month, says uh, I am, which is yeah. great. And, and the thing is, every month I'm trying to think of more ways to help you with the with the content and how to use uh, the content calendar as, as Ronnie's showing there. So here we have May, the content calendar. And, you know, these are not all the holidays, but these are some holidays that you can use. You can see some examples in here and we actually go through yeah. you can see there's a, a summary of that month you know what are some things to focus on and then actually go through with specific ideas for each day of the the content calendar so it's a lot of great useful tips there and and just one example there which you would say how would i use it star wars day um i i mentioned in the video using star wars day to talk about what is known as the hero's journey which is that people face an obstacle and then they they have to if you think of star wars luke skywalker he has to go and he has to battle against the dark side then he comes back then he has to decide does he return back to his normal life well we all face that every day we have challenges so how do we overcome those challenges so using something that people know and then bring it into your tribe and your audience and again knowing your tribe and then you can use that our loyalty day why not actually just go and send out an email to your uh, to your clients and say, hey, here's a free report that I did. Thanks for being a loyal client. So there's lots of ideas there. Yeah, and, and there's a lot. We also kind of summarize it nicely for you if you click this little list button here so you can see the different list of days. Uh, and just to reiterate here, you just click on learn and go to content marketing calendar and you'll find the calendar on there as well. Um, so let's actually cover a few questions. If you have any last minute questions before we wrap up, please let us know um, in terms of the Q&A. Um, so T is saying, who or what do you use for rebranding? Also, where to get great images and videos for using, uh, creating videos for my business? Really great question. So um, in terms of what, who or what to use for rebranding, rebranding is simply just taking the content and making it your own. You've seen some examples already today where uh, Richard used slideshare.net to host a PDF. Richard created a video and he posted, it on, posted that video on LinkedIn. He created, um, you know, recreated an article and posted that on slideshare. Uh, infographics, you can use Canva to rebrand. You can use any of those tools to rebrand. So I'm not sure that answers your question, but rebranding is simply taking the content and making it just something different. Use any tool that you already are familiar with to do that, whether that's Google Docs or Microsoft Word or Canva or Crello, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, in terms of great images and videos, so there's a few places to go there. Um, there's a, the, so uh, I'll post some links in the chat, but what, one of my favorites is actually unsplash.com. So I'll type that in, mm -hmm. uh, pexels.com and pixabay.com. And then for videos uh, and also for, for, um, uh, for, for videos and for photos, there's also storyblocks.com. Now the storyblocks.com is paid, the rest are free. So unsplash.com, pexels.com, pixabay.com and storyblocks.com storyblocks has some fantastic video footage mm. and, and and fran says you're very creative richard believe it or not i wasn't i don't think i'm that creative but i wasn't always creative but it's just doing different things and then well and, and ronnie pushing me and saying come on richard you can do better than that <laughs> i'm going okay scratch my head okay now i'll do an audio but but this is it always just move the bar up slightly more and it doesn't matter you do the video as i said it doesn't come out. You do the audio and you stumble. It doesn't matter. Just the, the, the fact is doing it. It's better. It's better done than perfect. Absolutely. Um, okay. So the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, another question was Brian. So after uh, I created a digital product, um, how would I give them a sneak peek before they buy it? And if you did an introductory video, how long should it be? How would you attach the video in front of the product before they purchase it? So great questions there, Brian. So first off, think about uh, a sales page, right? And, and let me just actually um, pull up our page. 
Now this is, you don't necessarily need to do it this extensive, this is not the point, um, but just want to show you, how do you sell a product? Well, you need to tell people what, what, why they should buy it, right? What's the value? And if you look at our pricing page, that's exactly the point. Um, so Brian, in terms of your product, you have to think about why should anybody care? Why should they buy it from you? What makes you special? What are they going to learn? How are they going to feel when they take your product um, and use it and implement it? So that's the point. And for, for us, the big hook is, hey, you're never going to have to write from scratch again. That's a hook. So what's your hook? How can you tell someone, uh, hey, take my course and you're going to feel better, you know, be more confident, get land the best job of your life, um, you know, have better lasting relationships with your children. Like, what is it? What is the big hook? What is the big value? And um, just list bullet points. Like, here's what inside of this course, this is what you're going to discover. Boom, 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 boom. Bullets. Um, you know, I, I'm going to share, I'm going to reveal the secret technique to learn English um, without stumbling when speaking in front of a crowd or whatever those hooks are. You make a list of the, the different things that you're going to um, help people with. What are you producing in terms of value? And um, a sneak peek would be as simple as kind of like what we're doing on this page. I mean, we're, we're showing you what other people are doing with their content. In your case, you might show screenshots of what the actual product looks like, um, kind of like what we do here. You right? You see a little screenshot of what the product looks like. Um, you want to give people a good sense, a good preview of what they're actually getting. Uh, this image here is actually created by one of our tools called Product Showcase. Um, it is available for, for members uh, for free, included in your membership, monthly and annual plans. So if you go to tools and then you go to product showcase, you'll see and learn more about that. It is available. I'm, I'm logged in here. And then if I just upload a PDF, it will actually create a beautiful page spread like what I just showed you. And there are some training videos here at the bottom as well. Um, so you can absolutely do that as well to showcase what is included in your product. This tool, again, is already included for monthly and annual members. Um, then you also, in terms of a video, you can just upload your video to YouTube and you can um, just, just no different than that what we have on, on our page here, link that video, just embed that video onto your site. If things are a little bit too technical for you, uh, we can recommend a virtual assistant that can help um, or just find someone off of Fiverr uh, or a friend, someone who's ever you know, worked with, with web stuff um, you'll be able to do that. Also, it depends on what platform you're using. So if you're using something like Thinkific or Teachable, any of those course platforms, they just allow you to paste in a YouTube link or upload a video and they take care of that for you. So um, without knowing that what you're using, it's hard to give very specific advice, but the point is um, you could either hire someone or use the platform that you have to upload that video. So hopefully that is helpful. Um, and uh, what are the names you typed that you just that you just mentioned? I think you're talking about the the photos, maybe Hewitt, um, Unsplash.com, Pixabay, Pexels, and Storyblocks. Those are if you want to find additional um, stock stock photos or stock videos to add to your website. Oh, someone asked a great question about where do I find the replay? So they are on our YouTube. You will be able to just search for PLR.me on YouTube. Um, also, if you just go to learn and how to use PLR content, the video section here, it will be featured at the top of the page once they are, um, once it's live. So you'll see it here. This was last week, so you can find it on here, or you can just scroll down to where it says webinars here. And then you can find the other office hours that were on here as well. Um, so lots of different ways, YouTube, or just go to plr.me slash videos to find the replays. Uh, uh, okay, so Thomas says, is it possible to see a monthly calendar one month in advance better plan? Yes, you can actually see months in advance. If you click on content marketing calendar and you just use the little arrow to flip to the next month. So you can click on the little arrow here. You can see June. July, and then you can actually just click on, you know, August here, let's say we want to plan a few months in advance, let's say you're going to be on vacation, you want to have content pre scheduled, you can go to August, and then you can click on any day here, there's kiss and makeup day if you're a relationship coach great um, holiday to kind of piggyback off of there's some examples in here, and then we also include content that you can download. 
and make the content plan super simple for you. So you can just download that and publish it, get it ready to go in advance without having to write it all from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I was just going to say there, uh, Ronnie, that it, it's something that, you know, we've talked a lot about, about hooks and getting the hooks because you could have two videos or two products and one has a better hook. And I'm getting a bit geeky now because as I'm reading things and I'm watching TV, I'm listening out for hooks. And I remember one, we were watching a crime program the other day and the hook at the start of the episode was, you know, everything was unraveled and they solved the 20 year old crime because of a cigarette. And you go, wow, how hmm. was it that they found it in a DNA or whatever it meant? And then it was well into 20 minutes into the show that they actually told you that, but it kept your attention because you say, if they just said we solved the crime, oh, okay, but it was that one detail. So start thinking, start looking at, you know, newspapers, TV shows, whatever, to see how they get a hook in. And, you know, a lot of the times uh, the, the newspapers are great at writing good headlines to hook you in or the cover of a magazine because you think, oh, wow, well, I'm going to pick that up because I want to see, you know, learn how Richard lost X amount of kilos in 20 days with no exercise. That's a hook you want to go in and you want to see. So, so think about that because that's going to help as well. That's, that's going to help always with your, uh, with your products, with your services. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You have to really refine that. And it starts by getting to know your audience and who they are and, yeah. and what they struggle with so that you can best serve them. Um, so just a couple more questions before we wrap up. Uh, Mark is asking, where do I find articles in the right format for the content auto loader? So first off, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to share my screen one more time. So the content auto loader is another plugin. It's a WordPress mm -hmm. plugin for members only for monthly and annual members. If you go to tools and then you go to content auto loader, um, if you're logged in, you will be able to download the WordPress plugin. Um, so just for those, if you're not familiar, what it does is it actually allows you to upload a zip file with five, 50 or 500 articles, doesn't matter. And it will pre-schedule them onto your WordPress site. So you can actually literally pre-schedule a full year's worth of content and it'll automatically um, post it on your WordPress site at the schedule you decide. So it could be once a day um, or every Monday or every Tuesday and Thursday, however the schedule you'd like. So you don't actually have to copy and paste 500 times the, the text. It will actually allow you to take any docx or text file, so txt, and it will upload that for you onto your WordPress site. So it's a fantastic tool. Now to uh, answer your question, Mark, um, where do you find articles in the right format uh, for the content autoloader? So all of our articles are already in the right format. Now, you, what you need to do is you just need to get all of the docx files and put them in a folder. So let's say you go to products, you can actually go to product types, you can go to articles. It, it doesn't have to be articles. It could be any type of content that we have, uh, but I'll just obviously probably you're looking at blog posts in this case. So you can download any of these articles. And so let's say we'll go to this item. So you want to download this and you can download bundles as well, but just to show you, click on download, it'll automatically create uh, the request and I'm going to open it up and you will see what you get inside. Now, uh, I got to move it over, hang on, it's in the wrong screen. Um, da, da, da. So here is the file, let me just push it here, oops. Um, so what you will see in just one second, got to get it shared on the right screen. I've got dual screens going on, okay. So here is, here's what you get. So you see there's a docx, there's a PDF, and there's a text file. So the PDF is not what you use for the content on order because the PDF is not the same as what a, um, what a docx file is, right? A PDF is sort of saved in a format, it's designed. Docx is an editable document. And so you would just pull the docx files and put them all into one folder, zip it, and upload it to the content auto loader. Honestly, it sounds complicated. It's not. Um, just watch the tutorial video on the content auto loader uh, page to see how that works. But the docx files or the text files work. 
Uh, I always recommend the docx files because they're already bolded and formatted. There's lists. It just looks kind of nice, uh, but you don't have to do that. You can also use the text files as well. Um, okay, so I think that's all of the questions. Um, I guess my last thought before Richard's final thoughts is, you know, if if uh, you would like to, if you're not already a member, um, definitely take a look at the pricing page. You can choose your options. There's lots of options there. Everything from pay as you go credits for just twenty two dollars all the way up to our annual plans. Um, so the the goal here is to just help you help other people. And the way you can do that, of course, online or offline is through content, is through sharing your knowledge and mm -hmm. wisdom. And by taking the content from PLR.me, injecting it with your own personality and style, and branding and humor, like what Richard does, create it, create your own content, publish it in different places. And again, the beauty is you don't have to write from scratch. So definitely take a look at that PLR.me and just go to the pricing page and you will find out more details there. Richard, any other things that you'd like to share uh, when you when you said final thoughts there i thought about jerry springer where he used to always go to the side and he would say <laughs> and in today's episode we learned the importance no final thoughts there is one question just dr uh Vishwa says is there any content on niche clarity and curriculum design um in niche clarity if you wanted to if the question is, you know, we do have a training about clarifying your niche, um, which which could help you if it's for your own personal use. Curriculum design. I did a video series of how to actually create a course on Udemy using our content. Um, so I don't know whether that would answer your question and whether that would suffice. I'm but, on the videos page just to show you. Yeah. You scroll down how to clarify your coaching niche and how to build a coaching sales funnel. If that's what you mean, that's for your personal use. Um, mm. But I don't think we have content that you can rebrand specifically about um, niche. I don't know what that means. Um, niche clarity, like clarifying your niche, maybe perhaps. Um, uh, I would go for that one. If, you know, if it's for you, uh, how to clarify your coaching niche would really help. Awesome. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for being here, Richard. Thank you for, oh, wait, did you give your final thoughts? I can't remember. You just re mentioned Jerry Springer and you threw me off there. <laughs> my, my final thoughts, let me just put myself in a position. No, final thoughts are your niche is really important. Know the objective of every piece of content that you're putting out there. Is it just to build authority? Is it just for people to get to know you? Or is there a sales process behind it? And every every piece of content that you that you put out should lead to some sort of sales process. Um, forget about the technology. Focus on the content. I always say to people, and I I set up a web design course back in 1997, which was dinosaur years of the internet, when Ronnie was just a young lad. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing that I I actually remember just on an offside saying to people, there's a new search engine that's just been launched. I don't know how good it is. Uh, it's called Google or Google.com. So yes, that's gone back a few years. But I said content is king. And, you know, you can have all your technologies, you can have all your special programs, but, you, you know, content is what people are looking for from you. Um, they don't care whether you have uh, a website that has this flashing up and that flashing up and little video of you going, hello. Um, they don't care about that. They want content from you. So content really is king. So plan it out. And those are my final thoughts, Ronnie. I love it. We'll end there. Thank you for everyone for being here. Thank you, Richard. Look forward to seeing what you guys are doing using the PLR.me content. I look forward to that. Please share that with us. We would love to um, showcase you as well. So Absolutely. take care. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks, Ronnie. Bye.